Lane Library and welcome to Soups On. This is a series that I'm doing this winter, where in the month of December now and January and February, I am going to be showing you each month how to make a different soup. Um, I thought this would be great because it is cold and I always like something warm and hearty and comforting um, to eat during these cold winter months. The first soup that I'm going to show you today is probably my favorite soup, actually. This is a roasted red pepper and gouda soup. This goes great with just some croutons on top, a baguette, a grilled cheese. Um, it's very tomato soup-esque, but just kind of punched up a little bit uh, with the some of our ingredients here. And then with the, the gouda cheese and the cream at the end, it really turns it into something special. So... For this soup, we are going to use a crock pot. I have it set on low and it's been heating up. The soup takes about four hours on low or two and a half on high to get to the point where we can then blend it and add our cheese and add our cream. So we're adding whole ingredients right now. We are gonna use an immersion blender to get this really um, emulsified and a creamy texture, a homogenous texture towards the end. So you don't have to worry about chopping too many things up during this portion, okay? This recipe calls for two 14 and a half cans of fire roasted tomatoes. It's important to get the fire roasted because we want a little bit of that smokiness that, um, that comes through in this soup. So very easy, you just add your canned tomatoes right into your crock pot. You're going to add one 12 ounce jar of roasted red peppers, juice and all, whole peppers. Remember, we're going to blend this, so don't need to worry about anything like that right now. A lot of recipes call for just a few tablespoons of tomato paste in soups. I like to add a whole six ounce can of tomato paste. Um, Tomato paste is a really, I think, underutilized ingredient in making your soups have really um, a good depth of flavor. I think that soups can sometimes seem a little underwhelming, a little watery, and then people tend to over salt them to compensate for that. But if you add more tomato paste than what your recipe calls for, I think you get some of that richness that you're desiring in your soup without having to add a whole lot of extra flavorings or salts at the end. So I put the whole thing in and I just use a butter knife to get that out. And I put it right in the crock pot. Everything else. Perfect. To this, we are going to add some seasonings here. So I have two tablespoons of dried basil. I'll just put that right in. One tablespoon of dried oregano. One and a half tablespoons of coarse sea salt. Black pepper is really kind of a preference, I think. This recipe calls for, I think, about um, half, of a, half of a teaspoon of black pepper. I'm a black pepper person, so I tend to go a little heavy-handed on this. Entirely up to you. You can always also, you know, put in what the recipe calls for and then uh, add more at the end, you know, taste at the end, of course, like you always should, and see if you'd like to add a little bit to it. This recipe also calls for chicken stock. Um, you can buy chicken stock in a box, and if you do, I would buy low sodium. You can always add some salt, you know, but it's really difficult to take salt out. But the best way um, to use chicken stock, in my opinion, I love this better than bouillon brand here. I use this for everything. So basically a tablespoon of this in water equals one cup of chicken broth. So what I'm going to do here, I've got two cups of water here. We need three, but I'm gonna put in two right now. And I'm gonna get one more cup here at the sink. And add that in. I'm just gonna take my little 
knife here and add, that's about a teaspoon, another, we'll just add the rest of this jar and that looks about exactly like what I need. Okay, so we've got this part done here. Super simple, like I said, you know, the only thing you have to do with this recipe really is just wait. You know, it's, it's very easy to put together. I'll give this a little bit of a stir just to kind of combine. And we are going to add some garlic and onion that we're gonna saute, but first I'm going to um, dice my onion here. Best way to dice an onion is, you know, we've got this little taller end down here and then we've got the little fuzzy end, okay? I'm going to cut the top off of the onion. I've got a little garbage bowl over here. I'm gonna cut this onion in half straight through that root. Now, leaving this root on is nice because you're going to be able to cut and it's not gonna fall apart because it's all connected here at the bottom. I'm gonna take this first layer off so I don't have any skin in my diced onion. Do this with both. Okay. Perfect. And then when you're gonna dice an onion, what you wanna do, you know, of course onions have layers, but to make a nice small dice, and it's not totally important that your dice is perfect with this recipe because like I said, we're gonna be blending it later, but it is nice for, um, for cooking time that your dice is pretty even because you want all of your onions to cook at the same rate. So we've got our end here and if you just slice, even just once, kind of through the middle like that, then you've created a little slit here and then we create long slices across the top. You wanna pinch this together so your onion doesn't come apart and then you just go right across the top here all the way to the root, and you have this beautiful dice here. I'm gonna do this with the second piece. This recipe was one I found a couple of years ago um, online, and I sort of tweaked it to my liking. I've brought this to potlucks, work events. Um, people love this soup, they love it. It is so cozy, so delicious. Reminiscent of, you know, just the childhood can of tomato soup, but really punched up for um, an adult palate. The kids do like it too. And if you just tell them it's tomato soup, they think it's just tomato soup. So I've got my onion here. This recipe also calls for, let's see here, um, three, cloves, three cloves of garlic. I typically do like to use the minced jarred garlic. I just think it's easier Use fresh if you'd like to, but a half a teaspoon of the minced stuff is equal to about one clove of garlic. So I've already got that measured here. And meet me over at the stove in just a minute and I will show you how we're gonna saute all this together and then add it to our soup. Hi everybody, we are back here over at the stove. I have three tablespoons of butter, unsalted butter, going in this saute pan here. And what we are going to do, I'm on about a a uh, medium, maybe a medium high heat here. I am going to saute the onion that we just diced in this butter. I'm gonna let this go maybe 30 seconds before I add the garlic because garlic burns very easily and it does not need as much time as the onion. So we're gonna get this in here, just kind of mixed around. You know, this step is not critical to the dish. Um, you could you could drop your raw diced onion into your crock pot and your uh, raw garlic into the crock pot. It's, um, flavor-wise, it's almost gonna be the same. This is just a nice little step to soften things up, to get a little, little brown on things, kind of release some of those sugars, which are nice, and it just sort of adds to the, um, a more delicate onion taste in the dish. 
But if you are pressed for prep time and you can't, you know, do this step, it's not going to, it's not going to ruin the dish. These look pretty good. So now I'm going to add my garlic. Oh, I love that smell of onion and garlic together. It is just the base of so many delicious recipes, isn't it? Mmm. It fills up the whole house on a cold weekend. This is a soup that, you know, well, it's not a, um, like a typical Christmas or holiday soup. I think it would be fantastic at a, a holiday potluck, a Christmas dinner, um, a New Year's Eve party. It's, it's rich and beautiful. It's warming. It's red. So it's very festive. Um, this is, this is definitely in my regular soup rotation in the winter months. I probably make this soup at least once a month, October through March, maybe, depending on how long it stays cold in Ohio. Okay, these look really good to me. They're softened a little bit, and I'm just going to go back to the crock pot in just a minute. I'm gonna add these in. So join me back over at the crock pot. So now we've got our beautifully sauteed, kind of translucent onions and garlic here. All we're gonna do, we're gonna add all of this, the butter, everything it's cooked in, right into our crock pot. Beautiful, that is, oh, it smells so good in here. That is wonderful. You guys, that's, that's it for the next, four hours on low or two and a half on high. Give this a stir, pop your lid on, watch a Christmas movie, um, do some chores, I don't know, read, take a nap, whatever you wanna do. Set a timer and come back to this. You don't need to take the lid off, you don't need to stir it again. We're just gonna let this go. And then when it's time, we are going to come back. We are going to use a immersion blender to get this nice and smooth. Add our cream, add our gouda, let it go another hour, and then soup's on. Hey everybody, we are back. It has been four hours, and in magic TV time, our soup is ready. Ready to blend, that is. So I'm going to take the lid off. Oh, do you see that beautiful steam? So we have this gorgeous mixture in here of our fire roasted tomatoes, our roasted red peppers, remember that onion and garlic that we sauteed together, all of our herbs. Now I am going to use this immersion blender to blend this mixture completely together, make it um, smooth and beautiful, and then we are going to add our cream and cheese. So you can use a traditional blender to do this, and you would just use a ladle, scoop into your blender and blend, but I will caution you using a blender with very, very hot, almost boiling liquids is dangerous. So if you have an immersion blender, I would definitely go in that direction. If you don't, just be very careful. Make sure some of the steam has released and you're not trapping it in the top of your blender because really it's going to blow the lid off of your blender if you don't make sure that you're, you've got things cooled down a little bit. But this is a handy dandy little piece of equipment here. This gets things nice and smooth. So we're just gonna blend this. This makes it so easy. And while you're using an immersion blender, you wanna go, you know, you wanna be at the bottom sometimes, up in the middle of your soup. Make sure you're getting all, all of the parts. fun also. Oh yeah. Okay. That looks just about perfect to me. Slip this to the side. And now it is time to add our half a cup of heavy cream. However, if you just pour this in like this, this cold cream into this hot mixture, you run a high risk of curdling your cream, breaking the soup, and it's just a mess. So 
what I would like for you to do is to temper your cream, which means adding a little bit of your hot soup mixture into your cream here. It's gonna bring up the temperature of that cream just enough that it's not going to curdle when we pour it back in. Do a little more here. It's a good tip for any time you're gonna add any kind of dairy back into a soup. It's a really good idea to temper this way. I think that is probably perfect. So we're gonna just add this right in. Give it a nice stir. Okay. And in just a moment, I'm gonna bring the camera up close and add the cheese in so you can see what it's looking like. Stick with me. Okay, so as you can see, here is this beautiful orange soup that we've got here. Um, we've got our cream in here, we are mixed. Oh, it smells divine. And now I'm going to add eight ounces of shredda, shredded smoked Gouda, shredded Gouda. Um, I have not found pre-shredded Gouda before, so I just buy blocks or even deli slices and I zip them through my food processor. Makes it super, super simple. So we're just gonna add this in a little bit at a time. Give this a nice stir. This cheese just adds a beautiful, creamy, smoky element. I think we're good to add the rest in there. Yes, that is lovely. Look at that. Who, who wouldn't want to eat a bowl of this on a cold, cold December day? Or October, November, January, February, March. It's delicious all the time. Okay, so what we do now is get my spoon out here. I'm gonna pop my lid back on. We let this go for another hour, and then we are ready to serve. Be back in a few. Hi everybody, we are back and our soup is finished. I'm going to get a bowl going here and show you how beautiful and delicious this is. It smells so good, you guys. I mean, it's Talk about comfort food. Sometimes I like this with a grilled cheese. Sometimes a piece of baguette on its own, just in a spoon. Um, here it is here. Look at how beautiful that is. I do like to add a couple of little croutons on the top, and I think that is just a winter classic. I really do. Let's try it here. It's perfect. It's so good. The complexity, the flavors, that smokiness, you get the creaminess, the cheese, the tomatoes, that little pepper, the kind of um, Italian flavor from the oregano and the, and the basil. This is just delicious. I hope you make this for yourself. I am going to have all of my soup recipes available at the Lane Library if you would like to come by and pick them up. We've got our December soup here, and then recipes for my next two soups, which January is going to be a creamy mushroom bisque. February, we will be making French onion soup. I would also like to add that in January and February, we are going to be offering spice kits to uh, patrons for pickup. These are going to come in a bag, and what they are is all of the exotic spices and herbs that you will need to make your own chicken tikka masala in January and German sauerbraten in February. Um, there's a list of anything else that you would need to buy yourself to add to the recipe, a list of how to prepare the recipe, and some history on the recipe. So those should be really fun as well. And I hope you have a beautiful cold day today. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you next month. Soup's on. Thank you.